Hey everybody, welcome back to another Angular video. Welcome back and hope you're excited for this one. The last one we added some routing to our application. So if you missed that, and if you missed this entire series, I recommend if you're wanting to learn Angular, go back from the start. I made a playlist here on YouTube that you can go through every single video, step by step, and follow along. That's why I made the series. I started learning Angular recently myself, and I figured this was incredibly boring when I remember doing it about a year ago, and then I forgot all about it, and now I'm reteaching myself Angular. So it shows you how well it stuck with me, and I figured why not make a video series on it? And that's where we are today. Today's video is gonna be a longer one, I think, because we're just going to finish out. Here's the tutorial. By the way, it will be linked in the description for you to follow along, but we are on part five, adding a dashboard view. And really, I thought, why not just do all of this? Because all of these parts right here that we're going to do are linked in some way. So it wouldn't really make sense to break up the videos uh, any more than just ending part five. And where we left off, we, like I said, added routing. So now if I go to localhost 4200 and then go slash heroes, if I spell it correctly, it'll take us to the heroes component view. Right, and we also made a link right here. But we're gonna do a lot more. We're gonna add a dashboard. And this is the live example that they gave. It'll look something like this, right? And here's how our tabs, I guess, will eventually look like once we get some styling going. And if you like this stuff, don't forget to hit subscribe. We've really been crushing it with subscribers recently. I really appreciate all the love and uh, support. And I think this channel, um, you can benefit a lot from it. We, we both learn from each other, hopefully, on this channel and hopefully you learn something that will help you in the future accomplish something. So yeah, if that sounds interesting to you, don't forget to do it. And the first thing we need to do is we want to generate that dashboard component and then we'll use that as a view in the routing. So just like heroes will have a link, we will also have a dashboard and we'll display that view when the route is in the dashboard route. So grab some coffee or tea or whatever you're, you're drinking. I'm drinking iced tea right now. And let's get uh, let's get started. So I got my VS Code here running it locally, as we saw. And I'm just going to open up another terminal. And we're going to CD to the project, and then what source, and then app. I should be able to do this in my sleep now. And then we're also going to generate a new component called dashboard. So ng g c dashboard. All right, that's the shortcut of doing it. And now we have this new dashboard component. What's the first thing we're gonna do? We're going to cut out this spec TS because we're not using it for testing. So get out of here. And I guess I could get rid of the app component one too. I guess I forgot to do that at the beginning. There we go. All right, and now we're going to open the HTML of that dashboard component. We're gonna get rid of this dashboard works that it puts in there by default. And we're going to put an H2 first and say, here's the top heroes and dashboard is meant to show some of the top heroes that maybe I like and I think are really good heroes, I guess. Then below that, we'll have a div with a class called the heroes menu. And we'll go ahead and snatch the CSS from the tutorial in the future so it'll look pretty. But in the meantime, the class name is heroes menu. And then we're going to have an anchor tag and instead of href, we're gonna say, we're gonna create an anchor tag and then ng4 each hero and the heroes in the TypeScript of this component, which we haven't made yet, but we will. So we'll say let hero of heroes, and then down here, we'll just uh, bind it to the hero.name. We'll display the name. And each one will be a clickable button and in the future, when we click that button, we'll look at that hero's particular details. All right, so that looks good. Let's save that. And now we'll go to the TypeScript file. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create a property called heroes, and it's going to be a hero array. And at the very start, um, we're just going to make it an empty array. And then we're also going to inject the hero service. So hero service of type hero service right there and it brought it in for us at the top here same with hero before and then kind of just like we did in the heroes component type script the on init we're going to say 
let's run the get heroes method and uh, we'll create that method shortly after. So this dot get heroes and you can see it has a red squiggly. Something we can do is hover over it and click on that quick fix and then declare the method get heroes. So it kind of makes it shorter, I guess. And this is where we can call that service, subscribe to it, and set heroes equal to what we get back. And we can even manipulate it a little bit, which is what we're going to do. Because if you remember, there's a bunch of heroes. There's uh, 10 of them. And we only want the top heroes. We only want the top four, let's say. And actually, what they do in the tutorial is they take these four. They don't take the top four. They take um, starting from, I guess, the second one to the fifth. So we'll go ahead and do that. So this dot hero service dot get heroes dot subscribe because we want to uh, subscribe to that since it's an observable. And we'll say x lambda expression this dot heroes is going to be equal to. And this was a new method that I learned when looking at this tutorial ahead of time, we can do x dot slice, which is basically, it, it kind of reminds me of something you would see in Python where you can have a starting and a finishing part of an array and just grab those values in between. And the starting one is included, but the ending one is not included. So we're going to go from one to five, so we're skipping index zero. We're gonna grab one, two, three, and four, and skipping five. And then lastly, I'm going to go right here below where they say generate the component for the dashboard. I'm going to copy the CSS and place it in our dashboard CSS for the component. And save that and also save this. All right, so we have this component made, but there's no way to get to it because we haven't included it with the selector as a tag in any other viewable components. So we have to set up routing to it, right? And we're just going to do the same thing we did with the heroes. We're going to say path is going to be equal to dashboard. And we also have to specify what component is this going to display. It's going to be the dashboard component. And then it'll bring it in at the top here. And I like to make sure, I guess, the spacing's the same. And then something else we can do is we can add a default route because right when we start up our app, if you remember, and we just go to localhost 4200, it's just going to show a bunch of nothing and then a link and then the title of the app. It's not going to show anything else. So we can actually set up a default route and send it to the dashboard as well. So we could say path, which is going to be this, redirect to, and then the path to dashboard. So dashboard, and then path match full. And now if we bring over, make sure I saved. Yeah. Now if we bring over our web browser and I just take away this heroes, we just get a localhost 4200. It takes us right to the dashboard. It redirected us there, which is nice. And then like we did with the heroes, we can add some link to that one as well. And actually that's in the app component, not the heroes component. So right here, I can have another anchor tag. And we'll have a router link of dashboard. And we can have the text of dashboard. And by the way, uh, the router link, something I forgot to mention in the previous video, if you negate this slash, then it will just tack on this to the current URL. So if I'm already on the dashboard and I forget the slash and I just have this as dashboard, it'll be dashboard slash dashboard. It won't send us back to the root and then slash dashboard. It'll just tack it on to the current uh, URL. I found that out the hard way today at work, so thought I'd share that with you guys. So if you remember, and let me bring it up so it hopefully refreshes. If we go to the heroes, and yeah, this looks ugly, I, I guess I have to find where the CSS for this is. Um, but if you remember, when we click on this, this is a separate component, this hero details, but it doesn't have its own route. And what we want to do is actually remove it from this and have it its own view. 
and we can pass in an ID in the URL and that's how it knows which details to display. And so we're going to go back to the app routing module and add another path. And we're going to do something a little bit different in this, which we'll see. We'll say path is equal to detail and then slash colon ID. And this colon before the ID means this ID is going to be a placeholder where we're expecting them to also put in a slash some kind of ID right here. And we'll extract it and then pass it along to that component. And then the component is going to be uh, hero detail components. So if we go back to the dashboard, you might remember we didn't actually put like a router link for the anchor tag. So it didn't really know where to go if we were to click on one of those buttons. So now we're going to, I guess after this ng4, though I, it shouldn't matter, we're going to add a router link, which is going to be equal to slash detail slash, and then we're going to bind in hero.id. So now it'll take us to the detail component and then we'll extract the ID from there. Cool, so now let's go, I know we're jumping around a lot, but <laughs> hopefully you're following along. Okay, let's go to the heroes component HTML and let's get rid of the click and the class binding of the list item. And then on the outside of the list item, let's add an anchor tag and put the list item inside of that anchor tag. Actually, I did that backwards. Let's put the anchor inside the list item. So right here, and then I'll put that span inside this. Try to get the spacing to look a little better. And same thing, router link is going to be equal to slash detail slash hero dot ID. So now in the TypeScript of the hero detail, we want to extract that ID as I've been saying multiple times now. And the way to do that is we're going to first inject some things into this constructor. And the first thing we want to do is the hero service. So private hero service of type hero service. The next one is something we're going to use to get that ID from the URL. So it's going to be private route of type activated route right here. And it'll pull that in from the angular slash router module. And then something else we're going to use later on is the location module. And we'll bring that in the constructor. And this is going to be used. So however we get to this component, when we hit the back arrow, um, it'll send us back to where we originally were. And this is a way to do that. So in the on init lifestyle hook method here, we're going to go ahead and say this dot get hero. And we're going to run this method, which hasn't been created yet. So we can do the same thing. We can hover over it, quick fix and declare it. And the first thing we want to do is grab that ID. So constant ID is going to be equal to, we're going to cast it to a number because it'll actually come back as a string since it's basically a string in the URL. And we're going to cast this dot route dot snapshot dot uh, param map and dot get which parameter are we getting from the URL? We're getting the ID, just like that. Ah, there we go. And then we're going to call our hero service. We're actually going to call a method we haven't created yet, but we will. And it'll be this dot hero service dot get hero instead of heroes. Remember get heroes is the only method there so far. We're going to pass in that ID and then dot subscribe because we're going to make it return an observable. And whoops, I, I ended up putting get heroes instead of hero. And now we pass an ID. I guess what we can do is we can get rid of this input because it's no longer an input. And we're going to subscribe and say X as we done before this dot hero is equal to X. So now I bet if I hover over this and we see quick fix, we can declare a method get hero. So let's do that. 
And now let's see what it looks like in the hero service, if I can find it right here. So now we have this new method called get hero. It takes in an ID and it's going to return instead of an observable of hero ray, it's just going to be an observable of hero. Jeez, I cannot type hero. And actually I'm going to put this uh, below the constructor. So I'm going to move the constructor up above. Then we can say constant hero is going to be equal to heroes dot find. So this is a way to search through all of those heroes. And we can do a lambda expression. So um, E, let's just say, or maybe H for hero, where H dot ID is equal to the ID passed in. And then here we can add a message for a message service at the bottom. So this dot message dot add, we grabbed hero with ID of, and maybe I should have used this. So we can do string interpolation with ID of, and then dollar squigglies and ID. And now we can return of hero. And then if we just went with this, it would have gave us a red squiggly because we need to add an exclamation point right here, which means uh, this is not going to return anything null. So no worries that, you know, this may be null. Okay, so let's go back to the hero detail component TypeScript. And we're going to lastly add that go back method, which is going to use the location that we injected into this class. And it's going to be a void. And it's going to say this dot location dot back. And then make sure at the top you bring in location from Angular Common. It actually didn't bring it in like I thought it did. And this wasn't uh, recognized at first because of that. And I'm just going to copy the button that they have in the tutorial, which we're going to put in the hero detail um, HTML. And it's going to be right here below the div. And let's see if we have any CSS to copy. We do. So I'll put that right here. And let me also copy the CSS. So all of this is at the bottom. And let me go ahead and copy it from the heroes component. I'm just going to um, copy over everything we already have just to make it fresh. And I'm also going to copy the app component CSS over what we have so far, just to make sure because those buttons definitely weren't, and there's nothing here. So that's probably why those buttons definitely weren't looking very well. So let's bring over the app and see how everything works now. And actually I'm going to make sure it looks like we do have some unsaved. So let's go to save all under file, make sure everything's saved or recompile. Oh, and I forgot, so if we go to the heroes component HTML, we no longer need this right here. So this is the heroes page. So let's go back to the dashboard. Here are our top heroes. If I click on one, let's just click on the first one, Narco. It'll bring up Narco's details. It passed in the ID at the top, and you can see it brought back the correct uh, details of that hero. We can hit go back, and it sends us back to the dashboard which is cool. So if I go to the heroes page now and then click on Narco, same thing, we go back, it sends us to the heroes page instead of the dashboard. So it knows how we got there. And then here are all the messages at the bottom, which are great. And we accomplished a lot in this video. I, I'm sorry if I went fast, I didn't want this video to carry on forever. And um, if you missed anything, feel free to you know rewind or check out the tutorial. It'll be linked in the description. But if you made it through all this, way to go. Uh, I'm proud of you. You should be too. And we're really getting close to being done. It looks like we're getting data from the server in the next one. So be excited for that.